Hi guys, it's Eni, aka The Not Trader, your friendly neighborhood swing trader, back again with another video. And today I've got another special guest with me on the Pip Talk podcast. I've got Jessica Walker, aka Trend Creative, Forex <laughs> Trader, Extraordinaire, and Dance as well, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Seems to do everything at the moment. Hey, Jessica. So I, I actually caught your your channel um, while I was just scrolling through YouTube, looking at other uh, content around trading, especially forex. Since I started forex recently, and I came across yours, and I was really interested with it um, because of your journey. I know you you started recently. Can you tell me a little bit about how you started your forex journey and why as well? Sure. Um, so <laughs> this time last year. I bought my property. So this is where I live. I'm in, I'm in London. And um, in that same week that I bought this property, my manager at work decided to completely get rid of my job role and made me redundant. Oh, no. So <laughs> they don't have a digital marketing team anymore. Not sure how they're getting on. <laughs> but I had no, I had a whole mortgage and no way to pay, pay for it because I'm a dancer and dance jobs just really aren't cutting it. Um, so I cried for like three days and then luckily I had, um, a James Bond film job come through and, you know, I was doing that and, you know, there was this girl who was there and I was kind of watching her over her shoulder and I was like, huh. And I literally watched her. Sorry. Somebody is like doing the most outside. Can you hear that? Yeah, no, it's all right. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> and, um. I literally watched her for about an hour make more money on her phone than we were making for that whole week on set. And I was like, what is this? I'm not going to ask any questions. Just I need in, <laughs> you know? And, you know, that's one of my closest friends and the rest is history. So um, it's, I've just loved my journey ever since. And it's just absolutely changed my life. It's a bit cliche, I think. Like, but it's true. And it's just allowed me to have laser focus on what it is I want to do as an artist, you know? Whereas before I was very, um, I've always been determined, always been a very motivated person. However, I kind of lacked the direction because I knew I had to rely on government funding or, yeah. you know, I had to wait for other people to hire me as a dancer. Whereas now I've got financial freedom as an artist. I can pay dancers. I can pay for studio space. I can pay for videographers because I'm now a self-funded artist. You know, yeah. so that's the whole reason why I traded first to pay my mortgage and then to fulfill my creative career, essentially. Yeah, it's great the way how trading, once it gives you financial freedom, it also gives you the the leeway to now explore things that you, would have done, you wouldn't have time or even the finances to do because you're still on the rat race. So it's great that you've, especially as a creative, I'm sure there's so many endeavors that you wanted to do, but that you always thought oh, as finances yeah. was like a hamstring and hamstring and what you wanted to do so yeah. from that day that you saw that girl over her shoulder trading to where you're at now where you're educating people as i can see from um some of the webinars that you hold how was that journey obviously there was there was a there was a learning curve between you le you seeing someone trade and saying yeah i went into now being a, at a place where you could even educate beginners yourself so tell me yeah. a little bit about that journey you know uh my journey was quite rocky in the beginning like I've never, I've never blown an account. Let's put it that way. So I'm quite lucky. I've never, Better me then. <laughs> Better me. I've never done the things. Or I've never made the mistakes to, to blow a whole account. So I've made all of my money from that first ever initial investment, which, which I think is really great. And you know, it's wow. totally possible. However, I did flip flop for like five, three to three to four months. Sorry. Um, you know, I would get to the next boundary of 100 and then I'd go down again. So I kind of flip flop between 200 and 400 pounds for like four months very frustrating and you know i was always on the phone to my mentor like it's not working i don't get it yeah. you know because i also you know i thought i was a very intelligent girl you know i did like a level maths and things like that so i thought i thought that oh this is going to be easy i'm going to be rich yeah. in a month absolutely not the case um however i wanted those long-term results more than I wanted to quit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So sure. even though it wasn't working, it wasn't working, I was like, I'm going to make this work. I have to make this work, you know? So um, I just kept pushing and kept pushing. And then once I got my consistency, the reason why I flip flopped was because I wasn't consistent. I wasn't disciplined. I was wishy-washy. And I wasn't documenting. I wasn't journaling. I wasn't doing self-development. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So once I honed in on all of those things i then 
started to see my consistency. I started to see my growth. And then, you know, that was when I started then going onto YouTube and I kind of wanted some inspiration, you know, somebody who maybe looked like me, who was doing well, who I could aspire to be like and maybe learn from. And I wasn't seeing anyone like that on YouTube. It was mostly like, Men shouting yeah, screams. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean? <laughs> like men. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, this feels kind of intimidating. Yeah. And I've already been doing this for like six months. So yeah. I'm sure there are new people who find this more intimidating, if that makes mm. sense. That's when I started to start my YouTube channel, just talk candidly about yeah. the process. And actually, it's not all smoke and mirrors, but it can be if you get there. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And when I started to do education, I like to handhold. I like to handhold during those first, you know, first six months because it's the hardest. It's, yeah. it's horrible. It is horrible. <laughs> you're, you know, you're scrapping away to try and catch like two pounds. Yeah. It sucks and it's boring. But that is the stage that most people don't get through. So I like to really handhold during that process so that when you do step, you know, when the ball does start rolling, you can then be a bit more independent. Yeah. But it does take a lot of work to get there. And a lot of commitment and not just motivation. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what what I want to touch on is actually something that you said about how like you were flip flopping between like was it two and four hundred pounds or one and two hundred pounds? And yeah. I'm I'm not gonna lie, I'm very impressed because that it takes, I don't know whether it's foresight or just uh, self-awareness to know not to uh, revenge trade or the emotional aspect of trading. Everyone can learn supports and resistances and all that type of stuff, but the psychological stuff that people uh, make mistakes on normally uh, is a steep learning curve that takes a while and for the fact that you weren't able to blow a count so early on what what do you attest that to was it your mentor or was it just the maybe that you're smart enough to know not to not to double down on the trade once you're <laughs> once you're losing yeah. or I'm, I'm curious because me personally i'm just talking from my experience you're even though you're you're you're, you're earlier in your career than me i can see you're far you far surpassed where i was where you at just because you're not making some of the mistakes that entry level well not entry level your own call you entry level but yeah. someone a year in or something would make yeah you know what it is it's it's my educators and my mentors you know i do not attribute any of my learning to just my own inherent ability because i've been massively supported um you know i've got teachers who i who i learn from every single day mm. um i've got mentors who i can call to support me and you know obviously sometimes i i Threw my toys out the pram. We all have those moments. However, they're constantly telling us what not to do. Do not do this. Yeah. People are silly and they will continue to do those things. Mm. Whereas I was, I just listened and I just said, okay, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And then just, you know, make a note of the things that bring you joy and bring you peace, you know? So if you like going for a walk and maybe, you know, getting a Lucas aid or whatever it is, do that. <laughs> or if you want to go in the other direction, have a glass of wine and go to bed. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Don't do it on the charts. Yeah. So <laughs> that's kind of how I managed. But you know what? I just enjoyed the process more than anything. So even if I was in drawdown, even if I was hitting stop loss, I'm like, yeah. But I'm still trading, so it's still fun. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So even if I'm in deep drawdown, I'm like, woohoo, we're going to ride this way. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I really like to hear that because um, a lot of people, especially you get a lot of, especially even teenagers, I get a lot of people coming up to me and saying, oh yeah, I want to trade. I'd be like, oh, why do you want to trade? I want to make money. I was like, me too, but that's not why you should want to trade. Money is a byproduct of of, of enjoying trading. But yeah, tell me. When people say that to me, yeah. I'm bored. It does yeah, not yeah, interest yeah. me. I'm not interested in working because I get like a hundred messages a day now. Mm-hmm. People want to trade with me. Yeah. Which I get because of YouTube. However, yeah, yeah. I, I don't like, you know, bring on any old Tom, Dick and Harry. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I want people who have very clear financial goals, mm. who, sh- who show motivation, who are self-starters mm. and who show, you know, that they're sensible and, you know, they're willing to do the long work, you know, and also invest in their education in themselves too. Yeah. So yeah. when people just say, I want to make money, that doesn't excite me because yes, once you make the money, what happens next? You know, it's not yeah. a financial goal. How long is a piece of string? Whereas if you tell me I've got this project I want to do, I've got this career path that I could, you know, invest in, blah, blah, blah. That's what, you know, gets me excited. Yeah. Then I can help you actually to complete some of those goals. Mm. And that's what we're now doing in trade creatives. People's creative visions are now coming off the ground and being executed, which mm. excites me far more than making money, yeah. which is kind of crazy because it means that my mindset has done a massive shift. 
because before I would have done anything for a couple hundred quid. Yeah. <laughs> and now, you know, money's money's a boring conversation. It's more about the skill, which is enjoyable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Or lifestyle outcome, which mm. is enjoyable. You know. Yeah. So you mentioned trade creative. I I, I gave it a look, uh, looked at it, and uh, I read a little bit on the landing page and. Uh, uh, on my website yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah that was pretty good to you but, um tell me a bit more about it because i know i know what it says on the landing page but i'm, I'm i'd rather hear from from you <laughs> uh, yeah, i know uh, it's about it's, it's, it's a page for um well, let me not let me not butcher it you, you tell me what it is about. No, I'm not, this is good market research for me <laughs> if you don't get it then probably yeah. other people don't get it okay so you're you're getting entry-level trade people that are that are in the creative industry and you're facilitating a community for them to learn how to trade hey God, I couldn't have written it better myself. If you can I, send that bit of copy over to me. I, will, be- I, will, I invoice you, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, yeah, it doesn't make sense to me how there are so many creatives and artists who are absolutely struggling. Like when my yeah. friends tell me that, you know, I can't afford food this month, I'm like, this is not okay, mm. you know? And throughout school, we are told that if we go down a creative path, that we are not valued economically mm. and that we essentially deserve to not get any money, mm. which is an absolute bit of bollocks because art makes the world go round. Yeah. Netflix, I don't know, whatever home design, what, whatever it is, it, it's all done by the creative industry. So we're just massively undervalued and People can't afford to pay their rent, which isn't isn't good enough, especially in twenty. This whole twenty twenty with iPhones and the internet is free. It just yeah. doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. So I'm just seeing like the financial revolution is happening now, and if artists can learn this skill and be able to fund themselves independently and not have to rely on government funding to get their artwork off the ground or have to do you know like GoFundMe pages and stuff just to complete their work. That's powerful, you yeah, know? definitely. So I really think that we can change, we're changing the way artists are doing things. People are scared because Forex is becoming a, a big thing now. So it feels still very new and very scary. Mm-hmm. However, I'm a firm believer in the next five years, we're going to see a massive shift in how young people and artists are doing things, for yeah. sure. And I, I'm excited to hopefully be at the forefront of that change. I thought it was just really, uh, really clever the way you brought your two worlds together you you didn't see them siloed because you saw okay i started trading i'm a creative and you realized you actually feel the gap as you said i know a lot of people that are in the creative industry and for everyone i got one friend that's a big actor and he's making good money and he's on big sky tv shows oh, yeah. shop a shop a dirisu oh, shop a he's in gangs of new york gangs of london Oh, okay, 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 okay. The main character, um, Elliot. Um, oh, yeah, 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 right. It's my mate. Oh. So yeah, I, I, for every one of those, one of him who's doing really well, I know like 50 other people that are on, on the bread line. So yeah. it really makes sense what you're saying. And I can see, see, see it blowing up, even if it's in that space alone. Because mm. as I said, you're, you're someone that's from it and you, you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're, your own, you're your own case study. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> which, is, which is, yeah, it's really clever. So let me ask you a little bit about strategy now, X and O's. What, what type of strategies do you use? You don't um, need to go into depth, 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 depth. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can be vague about it because obviously we ain't got no charts up or nothing. But. Sure. I, I honestly, I am a harmonics trader. Okay. You know, I absolutely yeah. love using harmonic strategy and also using Fibonacci. I, like market geometry is just one of my favorite, favorite yeah. things. Yeah. And it just, trading feels like an art form, you know, doing the analysis and understanding how money moves and you know i always say it feels like you patch the matrix mm. when you can just open each part and you see boom 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 there are the yeah, patterns. Yeah, you know yeah, what i mean yeah that's what feels crazy powerful mm. and no one can take that away from you you know yeah and then you know i always say you don't have to be an amazing trader to make money no. just be sensible and yeah. stick to your personal rules whatever they may mm. be so I like to call it like beans on toast trading. So you don't have to be like a Michelin star chef to eat yeah. well and have a good life. You can kind of get by okay just by having beans on toast every day, yeah. right? Kind yeah. of. So exactly the same thing. Just basic beginner strategy, be consistent, and you can make money work with whatever you do with that, mm. you know? A lot of people just lack consistency. Yeah. And also what I found is that a lot of, especially experienced traders, I was guilty of this a bit at some point where I felt 
I like to co- complex to make it as complex as possible because then it showed like my the intricacies of how it's like you don't get extra points for making it difficult. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. and that was so happy yeah. to me. And I always, always say some of the yeah. best trading happens when you're just using lines and boxes. Exactly. 100 percent You know, yeah. we do overcomplicate things. And that's when I say, you know, if we're starting to overcomplicate things, let's just kiss. Keep it super Dim- simple. Okay, yeah, yeah. Of course. And <laughs> <laughs> there's enough, there's other ones. Keep it simple, stupid, and all that stuff. So I wasn't sure which one you're going to use. <laughs> yeah. um, so what would you say has been the hardest part of trading? And what would you, you say was the, the easiest part? The two, the hardest part of, your, of trading mm-hmm. and the easiest part? I think the hardest part was getting over that desperation mindset. Yeah. You know, I so desperately wanted to see results ASAP Rocky. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I would be frustrated how a month would go by, I'm still no different. Another month would go by, I'm still no different. Like, why aren't I getting this? Also feeling that I wasn't getting it, you know? Um, That I just, you know, the markets had to humble me. Um, I've had big losses. Like, I've had big losses. That didn't really affect me as much as, like, the beginning stage, long-term stuff. Do you know what I mean? Because a loss is a loss. You can get, you know, have a good sleep and maybe a cry and you're going to be fine the next day, you know? (laughs) But when you're pushing and you're trying and you're trying, and it does feel really hard and it's hard to keep motivated, mm. that that was the part to be the hardest, yeah. the hardest part. And um, let me, you're, you said that when you first started, obviously it was because um, it was a byproduct of you being furloughed and then was it furloughed or you yeah. lost your job or and then um, you, I was made redundant. May, sorry, made redundant. Yeah. <laughs> made redundant. Sorry. <laughs> actually thought made redundant redundant. um Um, how did you how were you able to trade with a clear mind obviously i don't delve into your financial situation knowing that a mortgage payment was was like rearing this because yeah well i was you know what i'm trying to say it's true. And as a dancer, I didn't have very much income at the time. Yeah. I was working like three little safety jobs all at once, as okay, well as so. having like film work and okay. stuff come through. I was very lucky that I actually got some stunt work come through. Okay. So um, that in the stunt, stunt world pays very well. So okay. that was able to support me. Oh. And I just knew that something better was coming. I okay. knew that money was coming to me. Like yeah. that's never been a shadow of a doubt in my mind. Yeah. So the fact that I was having to scrape and suffer and, you know, work 6 a.m.s and mm. stuff like that, that didn't bother me because I knew that as long as I continued with this thing, the money was going to come eventually. So yeah. I suppose that was that was the thing. And it was hard. And I was, you know, the anxiety was <laughs> yeah, just <imagine>. crazy. <laughs> you know? yeah, and, you know, paying pay for your education, it's expensive. Mm-hmm. It is. But, you know, if you want to be a good trader, you're going to have to invest in yourself point blank and the thing that really frustrates me is when people want to learn for free off of youtube and that just gives me the heebie-jeebies because they're just risking a lot of their own money yeah see this is where this is where i think our opinions differ because mm. i think everyone's different everyone's different me personally i'm a i'm a i'm a hands-on type of guy if i would i don't know whether it's because i'm a cheapskate or because i like doing stuff myself but if someone says they can build my fence for 100 quid i'll go on youtube and i'll make it myself and i'll make it pretty much as good as the guy that built it for me maybe not as obviously he's a carpenter so he'll do it better but i can i can make it to a good enough standard if i if you give me enough time and um my trading journey six years to be honest maybe the way you did it was better because i i lost quite a bit of money along the way but but i taught everything i did i learned myself and i don't know whether it's because i like to die a thousand deaths just to do everything myself and i don't want to <laughs> uh, or uh, maybe i could expedite the process with a mentor but um I think it, you need to know how you learn and then that can dictate how you want to, uh, t- your journey to go. That wasn't even a question. I just said a statement. But, um, cause I'm not, I've, I've heard, I've seen your channel. I've seen you speak about how, um, it should, you should also, if you, you say that you should pay for it all the time. And I, I think some people should. I think some people, because I know for a fact there's people on my because I've got a little forum, a Discord forum, and there's there's 18, 17 year old kids that are better traders than me already. And they they just they just pick it up like that. So it's it's I think it's like knowing how knowing yourself, being self-aware and knowing how what works for you um as a as a as a as a trader. But yeah, it's more expensive to learn by yourself though. That is true. <laughs> you know, and so you've said that you've blown accounts before. I've never blown an account. Yeah. Yeah. 
because I had guidance. Yeah. And I, first of all, I had no experience of the Forex industry before mm. um, meeting the girl who got me started. Yeah. I would, uh, and so for that reason, you know, my education has been the only experience that I've had. I would not be where I am today without it, you yeah. know? Um, so that's the only advice that I can ever give to anyone. Mm -hmm. And I find it baffling because I know for a fact, I would not have been able to learn for free off of YouTube. Like I personally, I know that I need a mentor. I really enjoy having a mentor to support me. I love having a community around me. I'm a very like communal kind of person. Um, so, you know, for that reason, that's why I suggest paying for a place where actually you're going to feel supported. And if that's not everyone's bag, I know it's not for everyone, then that's absolutely fine. But the only advice that I can give is my own personal experience. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. Um, And you have a, your experience is probably like the, um, the best case scenario in a lot of people. And, and you've, you've probably been, I won't say lucky, but you've been, there's a lot of snake oil salesmen around in the forex industry. And you've managed to find a mentor that was the real deal the first time round. Um, yeah. And so your experience is probably not indicative of a lot of people in the market, but it's good that you can tell your story and maybe you can ask people to the right people because for every one good program, there's I'm sure you've got Instagram and I'm sure you've you've got hashtag Forex enough of your pictures that you get people uh, messaging you in an inbox saying that they want to flip money I for you. Don't you, know, actually, you don't I don't know. I, I don't get so any of that. Those, no. those maybe salesmen. it's because I'm a woman. They avoid me like know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you'll get it soon enough. You'll get it soon enough. But yeah, there's there's <laughs> there's, there's always these people just trying to... Um, FX gets a bad name rap because of so much mm. of the dodgy practices going on. So I think it's good when there's programs where your, your byproducts of the program that actually works. Because... Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I don't understand I, the programs, but it's, I can only go off of the things I've seen and heard from other people. And for whenever yeah. there's one that's good, I'm just like, great, at least I can, if anyone wanted to do a program, there's one I can direct and do that. I know that it's legitimate as opposed to the, the 30, 40 that I see that on. Yeah. And you know what, with any industry, there's going to be, you know, yeah. bad people. Mm. We can't avoid that. Yeah. Um, and also, especially with an industry that's to do with finances, a lot of people mm. are in a state of desperation because yeah. economies all over the world have been crashing for a really long time and everyone's reliant on one source of income and everyone's struggling and everyone needs money now. People who are devious know this. And those people who are vulnerable, they're, they're more just more vulnerable because they're yeah. they, they're easy to target because yeah. they will go for something that sounds amazing, which is a real shame, which is why I should always say, do as much research as you yeah. can um, before you know agreeing to anything and make sure you have your expectations set. Like, what is it that you want from a mentor? You know, do a bit of a case study. Can you speak to people who have also engaged with this yeah. person? Don't just rely off one thing that you see from them and also maybe one thing that you read on the internet. You know, do a proper case study of, your, of the thing that you want to engage with. Cool. And my final question, um, COVID, how has your trading, what, what differences have you seen in the last three, I'm sure we've all seen it, last three, four months, as opposed to before COVID, pre-COVID trading and pro, uh, during COVID trading, how's, how's, how's the market been different for, me, for you? What a journey. It's yeah. been a real journey. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, been, it's been my favorite part of my journey. You know, for a lot of people, 2020 is going to be the worst year of their life. Yeah. Um, also for a lot of other reasons yeah, yeah, due to COVID yeah. and stuff like that. But in terms of like people who haven't been affected by any like deaths or things like that, yeah, they'll yeah. still complain and be like, oh, COVID was the worst year because I didn't get to go on holiday. I didn't get to do X, Y, and Z. 2020 has been the best year of my life, for sure. Mm. Um, during lockdown, and I, there is a video on my YouTube about this, so I'm more than happy to talk about it anyway. I experienced I'll put a link. I'll put a link. Yeah. I'll put a link. <laughs> Thank yeah. me. I experienced my biggest loss during COVID because I actually had a trade open when Boris Johnson came on our screens and told us oh. that we were going into lockdown. <laughs> oh, no. And I made a mistake. I made yeah. a massive mistake, right? I forgot to set a stop loss. I'm very open about it. I, yeah. Oh, no. And I very re- I never oh. trade with Boris Johnson. Murphy's law. <laughs> but it's because, you know, I was, I was in my flat and mum was like, come home, they're going to start quarantining, you might not get a train home, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, distractions, like, yeah. again, Re- make sure you're not distracted whilst you're yeah. taking train. Okay. <laughs> I was in a GBP USB train. <laughs> and um, uh, literally within the space of about 12 hours, I lost 60% of my account. 
wow. never blew my actual account. I've yeah. never yeah. lost my initial capital, you know? Mm-hmm. So we have absolutely no reason to cry. If you have a yeah. stop loss, pick yourself up and move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crying about it is not going to help you. Yeah. Your money's out there. You just got to go back into the market and get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's just changed hands. It's over yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... You know, that was pretty bad. And then, you know what, as a result of that, like, reaction, I was up at, I, oh, I remember, I was watching the chart all night, hoping and praying that it would turn around. You know when you wake, you wake up and you fall asleep on the charts with your laptop yeah, 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 yeah. and you're having conversations with Jesus <laughs> and sweating and all that? I then you're rubbing your eyes. Is that, is that red or is that green? No, I can't be <laughs> Honestly, I start to trade gold, you know, Slippery slopes. We well, had to revenge trade afterwards. Yeah, we've. Uh, hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah revenge I'm, trading. I've got yeah. a whole series about that. I actually got a video of me recently, like losing a bit of money in a revenge trade, and then going further down in the hole. <laughs> oh yeah, and you know what? It's absolutely fine because that was the biggest loss that I've experienced, yeah. and I have never, and I will never experience that again. A loss is a lesson. Right. Mm, if you choose to, if you choose to make the same mistake twice, that's a choice. Mm, mm. Okay. So since then, I've so that happened right at the beginning of the lockdown. Yeah. I created new rules for myself. I've now come back and I'm better off yeah. than I would have been before. So I've now, like, essentially tripled my account in the space of like three months. Which there is you go. Crazy. So um, have I enjoyed <laughs> lockdown? Yes, it's been fantastic. Mm. But I'm excited to go back into the real world and be going back to my ballet classes, working on film sets, you know, and having trading fit back into my lifestyle as it would have done beforehand. Yeah. Okay. And that's what I'm really excited about. And I'm excited for everyone who's in the trade creatives team as well, because they've, they've been really lucky learning this skill at a time where they've got so much time. Right. Yeah. And it's when we go back to normality and they're now having to make it suit and adapt to fit around their lifestyle that's when it becomes really real and that's yeah. what's pretty exciting for me no, that's awesome that's, that's awesome i really like the um the content keep it up uh i can see your account your your your, your channel blowing up so i thought i'd catch you before you get too famous for I, don't know, you know. <laughs> I started it like three months ago to be fair yeah so um but i'm still not monetized yet so let's yeah. <laughs> let's get, get to that point. You, you get there you get there i can see it happening um thank you once again if you want to plug um Trade careers, your YouTube channel, anything else you got going, uh, I'll leave the floor to you. Oh, sure. So if you guys, you know, if you are creative, if you are an artist, if you are a hobby printer, we love you guys too. Or if you just have, you know, things in your life that you want to get off the ground, then you can absolutely have a word with me. I'm over on Instagram at Trade Creatives. I'm not even looking in the camera, I'm like looking at you. <laughs> um, I'm at Trade Creatives. Um, Jessica's trading journal on YouTube. So if you want to just hear someone talk really candidly about the process, then absolutely jump on. And you know, I'm always down for a coffee and a Zoom call because low key coffee addiction. I love a chat. So uh, <laughs> we can definitely talk about your trading journey. Sweet, nice one. I appreciate having you on the podcast. Okay, thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. <laughs>